In the early morning, 130 Ukrainian Jews landed in Tel Aviv to begin a new life. Many see the moment when these new immigrants step onto the tarmac here at Ben Gurion Airport as the time when the words of the Bible written thousands of years ago come to life. There has never been a people who have been exiled for so long who then return to their homeland, return to their language. And so there's the prophetic reality of this that's so huge that each one of these people Isaiah saw, Jeremiah saw, they saw them, they saw this happening, and now we are here to witness it. We are here to be part of it. Their flight marked the one year passing of Yael Eckstein's father, Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein, the founder of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, now simply called The Fellowship. He always felt a calling, that it wasn't him, but God working through him to unite Christians and Jews, to bring biblical prophecy to fruition. Although their trip ended in Tel Aviv, the life-changing journey began more than a thousand miles and a number of choices away. We wanted to find out why they made their decision. We know that Israel is the best place because we have also our relatives there, friends. Israel has many advantages. It's much safer. You just can go out at midnight and feel perfectly safe. It's so different from here. And it's warm, <laughs> so it's not as cold as here, so it's important. Some saw opportunity like 53-year-old Eugene. My future is no good, is this, uh, this country. I know in Israel I have a future, I have a job, I have uh, pay. Some escaped the war in eastern Ukraine. It was very dangerous. In the past three years, we've spent most of our time in the occupied territories, with severe shortages of electricity and water, and we survived the shellings. For some, it was a matter of faith. It's a decision not only mine, it's a decision of God. It's a decision for my family. The fellowship helped smooth the way by providing documentation, logistics and finances to bridge the gap from their lives in Ukraine to a new start in Israel. This orientation helped provide the information about their next step. Benjamin Haddad is director of Aliyah for the fellowship. We want to get higher the joy and the hope and get less afraid. But there is all the time this moment together in the hearts of the people the frightened from the future, from the unknown, and the big hope and the happiness about new beginning, a new country, and a new future that is waiting for them. My message today to them was they made the right decision because when they will be there, it will be difficult, but the end will be very successful. Rabbi Fischetsky prayed for the immigrants as workmen outside organized their luggage. Each person's belongings get a number, and they're permitted 70 kilos or just over 150 pounds to start their new life. With last minute instructions and documents in hand, some headed back to their apartments for a last minute goodbye. It's about 11 o'clock here in Kiev, just outside the Kavalenko apartment. They're loading their last belongings and in a few hours they'll be on their way to Tel Aviv, but they haven't told most of their neighbors. Only one neighbor from this home knows uh, about my departure. Only one neighbor? Only one neighbor. And because you don't want the other ones to know. But why? Why, why don't you want them to know? Because pe uh, people didn't like me, didn't uh, want that me and my family will be happy. Because you're Jewish? Yes. Irina keeps a mother's hope alive. I dream about oranges. In the boat, strawberry for my daughter. You see, it's a very simple wish, but I think it's mother's wish for, for her children. <laughs> the hardest part was leaving her best friend. After they finished loading their luggage, a last hug and goodbye to their best friends. The family then headed to Kiev International Airport for a few more hours of waiting before boarding their plane. It's about a three hour flight from Kiev to Tel Aviv. But for most of the new immigrants on this plane, this flight will be the biggest step of their lives. Not only mine, the step of my family, my husband and my daughters. A safe landing on a new land. Now I appear in my real motherland. 
I returned with my children and my husband and now I'm so happy, so proud. The most important thing in my life. For some, it fulfilled the hope of generations. It was a dream of my grandmother. She died, and if she was here, I would tell her, I made your dream come true. I'm here. I'm in Israel. I'm home. That's why I'm crying. With threats to the Jewish people rising worldwide, Eckstein believes it's time for the Jews of the world to come home. The fellowship typically brings 5,000 Jews to Israel each year. Sometimes I think that the reason why Isaiah said that the Jewish people would come home to Israel in the end of days is because he knew that anti-Semitism would once again raise its ugly head and if they didn't come home to Israel, the only country where there's a Jewish government, where there's a Jewish army whose only concern is protecting the Jewish people, unlike anywhere in the entire world, that there wouldn't be any Jewish people left in the world because of all the anti-Semitism. And so I look at this as you never know when the borders are going to close. You never know when it's going to be too late. And so the fellowship, as soon as we have the opportunity to bring a Jewish person home, we do it immediately. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Kiev, Ukraine, and Ben Gurion Airport, Tel Aviv.